Welcome to West Midlands Airsoft, the FOB. They very graciously let us use their site today for filming this episode. Today we're going to talk all about camping or sleeping out at Milsims. You may have seen our previous video on bashers and we'll go into a few more setups today and show you some alternatives. So let's have a look round. There's an old saying that any idiot can be uncomfortable. So if you've got overhead cover and at many Milsoms, like if you're going to play at Sennybridge, there'll be Fibula buildings you can camp in. There's no point putting up a basher, there's no point putting up a hammock if you can put a camp bed up and you've already got a roof. Now, here at FOB, we're going to mock that up with this bit of the uh, briefing safety area. Obviously, you'd want something perhaps a little bit more sheltered. And this is my old cot. Now, you can see it's been packed hastily in what we call rag order. But if I remove this bungee that holds it off together, you've got these two crossbars. And you've got the main bed. Now the main bed concertina's out. And then the back is the base of it. Thread through this little sleeve at each end. Actually wide enough for a minute. There we go. Now that seems really easy, doesn't it? The next bit's fun. So again, we move this bar through the sleeve. And getting the first one on, it's not too hard. Getting this one on, Herculean effort. There you go. So now with that in place, it's pretty rigid, relatively comfy, old combat jacket for a pillow, something over the top of your head. I've used this cot bed in dozens of milsims. The only issue with it is it's heavy, even though it's aluminium, it's bulky, it takes quite a bit of room in the car, about the same room as a small gun case and as you see if you're putting up in a hurry it can be a bit of swearing involved because sometimes it's a bit of an effort but if you're like me and Anvil and you're antisocial and can't stand being around most people you probably want to head into the woods and bash her up anyway so Tom shall we uh, leg it Tom 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 So this is my hooped bivvy setup with a basher for a bit of overhead protection. Very quickly, with me it's all about lightweight, low profile fit in a bag. So I've got a jungle sleeping bag. Now they're only good for a few months a year. You need a bigger one for winter. So I've also got a jungle duvet for added warmth if I need it. Label pillow, packs down to nothing, not inflated yet. And lastly, for a bit more thermal protection, an inflatable thermal rest that again packs down to nothing. I can get it all in a Rush 72. It's not bulky, it's not heavy. As I'm all about the comfort, I bought my full hammock camping setup. Overhead tarp, hammock, hammock quilt, sleeping bag, little tarp to keep me and my gear dry. And if we're out on patrol, we want to rig a very quick shelter, but British Army basher with jungle knots. So I'm going to set up my hooped bivvy as my particular choice of bivouacking at a Milsim. Now I'll be using a thermo rest mat for a bit of comfort and heat retention, but equally I want to make sure that the area I'm camping down on is clear first. I don't want to be on an ant's nest, I don't want to be on broken glass, I don't even want to be bits of log like this because it's going to wreck my back. But at a Milsom you might want to make sure that your AG and your webbing are always within two metres of you, so if you get bumped you can pick up the essentials, carry on playing the game and you're not caught compromised halfway through putting your basher up. So the beautiful thing about these poop bivvies, and this one's by Rab I believe, is that they're pretty quick to put up and it's always nice to put a basher up over the top of it for a bit more admin space if it gets wet or rainy but you don't really need it it's all in one packs up pretty small very lightweight so thread the segmented aluminium pole through the sleeve on the top of the bivvy and once it's through hook each end under tension into those brass grommets slightly easier than the camp bag so as Tom and I are doing now, it's a good idea to dry run these things because it's very, very easy to put your stuff away in a hurry, not know where it all is, and spend half your game faffing around, basically trying to find out where your pegs are, where your ropes might be, etc. Now these are fairly heavy duty tent pegs and not really necessary to be quite this large. But I find having these really big thick tent pegs means A, I don't lose them, and B, if I do need them for something more substantial like pegging in ropes over a basher, they're not going to get pegged up if someone trips on them. 
Yeah. So the benefit of having this hoop bivy is that it packs down really small, it's very lightweight, and it's relatively quick to set up. It doesn't actually take that much more effort than putting up a basher between some trees. No admin room though, that is a massive downside. If I want to go and admin my kit, if I want to do anything undercover, I just can't. I've pretty much got enough room to sleep in there and maybe sort of like read a map, maybe clean a rifle if I lay on my back, but that's about it. With a sleeping bag and a thermo rest in here, it can be a little bit tighter. So there's enough room for a rifle. Perhaps anything I want to keep dry at a Milsim, especially like maybe batteries. If I've got anything like my chart, any electronics I've got, I might want to keep them safe and dry. But it really is quite low to the ground. It's quite covert. It's as low as a tactical basher. Very lightweight, but you are scrimping on actual space for movement. So what you really probably want to do if you're doing this and you've got the time, is, as I've mentioned before, sling a basher up overhead. So if you want to cook and you're undercover, you want to admin your kit undercover, you can do it. So I'm going to put up my hammock sleep system, which is a bit more involved than a hoop bivy or a basher, but really comfortable. So this isn't especially tactical because you tend to be higher off the ground, but in most mill sims, you tend to be camping rather than bashering out in the middle of the game anyway. So the first thing to go up is my tarp. This is a DD Hammocks 3x3, which I'm going to set up with a ridge line. Now the reason I put a tarp up first is it's going to keep me and everything else dry in case there's rain. Put my hammock up first, my hammock will get wet, then I've got to line a wet hammock all night. So, top first. So I've got my ridge line ready set up. A couple of knots there, which we'll come to in a minute. This end's got a loop on. So, one of the nice things about a hammock setup is you can have loads of admin area above your head. So I can set this up above my head height so I can walk around underneath the top, which will be really great for comfort. And that's why I picked up a stick earlier. Uh, this goes through there. I can crank down on that, ratchet it, get it really nice and tight, and then walk the whole bundle out to the other tree. And we're gonna use what's called a trucker's hitch, which I'm probably gonna mess up. My wrist line's nice and tight. It's still hanged up, hanging there. You can always tuck it away if you want. And if you want a bit of extra security, you can either put a pin through like we did earlier with a twig off the ground, or you can just loop it over. Now, there are a million and one ways of tying these knots, and they're all on YouTube, and I'm by no means an expert. These are the two that I've just found to be really simple and quick for me. So my tops in a dry bag. Not really to keep it dry, but stop if it's wet, getting the rest of my kit wet. And it's just a really handy place and it compresses down nice and small. So this, on the centre, I've got a carabiner. And it just comes out. If you want to know more about a Prusik knot, there's a million one videos on YouTube. Fundamentally, it's just wrapped round you can slide it like that, but as soon as there's tension on, it locks off, which is really useful. So on the ridge line of my tarp, I've got these wooden toggles. I took off a old British Army tent bit of canvas that we bought, and they very simply just go through that little prosthetic knot. And we'll do exactly the same on the other side. And they also quite handily mark out where your ridge line is. Again, we'll slide the prosthetic knot in and just put it through the loop. And now all we need to do is get it roughly in the middle and slide it. When the attention comes along the ridge line, it locks off. That's really nice. You can even put on the toggle. And there you go. That's 
So I'll part of our ridge line set up and then we'll get the guy lines out. Really want your guy lines coming off at about 45 degrees to the top. It's not perfect, but it's not bad. Now I'm gonna leave the, leave the front up now so you can see what's going on. Normally I would drop it, give myself a bit of protection. When I'm under the centre, I've got full headroom, got absolutely tons of space to move around. If you don't have a convenient tree, you can always cut yourself a pole or find some dead, find some dead fall, put it up into that loop and hold the front up anyway. So after setting it up using this broken wood here, the top's a bit baggy, so I'm going to move the guy line out to get a bit of tension on to make sure the rain runs off. Pack the Bergens, packed in the reverse order in which I'm going to need things. So the stuff I need last is at the bottom and the stuff I need first is at the top. So the next thing I come to is another canoe bag or dry bag and this one's got my hammock set up in. Waterproof snake, again redundancy in keeping things waterproof. So it can go on wet ground, doesn't matter. It's all got this water resistant cover on it. So I've got a couple of upgrades on this. I like upgrading things from the normal tapes that you get, which are fine when you start camping. And we maybe go over those in another episode in more depth, but these are whoopee slings, again, sold by DD. I have also got a drip shackle or a twisted shackle to act as a drip ring and a bit of continuous loop on. We'll go over that in a minute. So these tree hugger straps, straps get wrapped around the tree. You definitely probably put them above your, your tarp ridge line because it's quite a long distance I'm going to put one strap through the end of the other and then put my carabiner on nice so the tree doesn't get any damage grab on walk the hammock out to the other side you can keep your hammock off the floor it's dry today so I'm not too fussed and again we're going to do Similar thing on this side, I might be able to go twice around this, this end. These straps are great because you can really easily adjust where I want it and I want, especially want the hammock inside, well inside each end of the car. And I want it at about bum height so I can use it as a seat as well. So the way this is set up, this stuff doesn't wick much water anyway, it's kind of Dyneema or Amsteel cord. But if any water runs down, I'll hit this, run down into the low point, and then there's a backup, but this twisted shackle on as well. I should always have a low point before the water runs down into my hammock and I get a wet night's sleep, which would be pretty meaning. Right, so now we're kind of happy. I can undo the snake. And the snake can just stay on until we need to put it away. Finish off some bits and bobs and talk about the pros and cons of the hammock setup. So as you can see, this hammock setup took a bit of time to get adjusted and totally sorted, but it is very comfortable. I've got absolutely tons of admin area. I feel like I can stay here for a week and be very happy. I've got enough space beneath my feet. I've got this tarp out, it's a bit of dry area, the webbing to hand, got my bergens ready to go. I've got my weapon just where I want it in case we get bumped or I need to dash out on patrol. But it's not really something you can move around, so it's not something you take out on patrol with you. Maybe something you set up in your fob or your HQ area. So a couple of extra points about the hammock. Obviously, you need trees or a place to hang it. And you're not going to get that everywhere. And the other thing is, don't take a hammock set up like this thinking you're going to save on weight, because you're not. Between the tarp, the hammock, the underquilt, the little tarp I've got down there as my footrest, my sleeping bag and everything else, it all adds up and actually it's quite bulky, but it is super comfortable. And obviously you need a bit of practice, it's worth going up your local woods, setting it up a few times before you try and do it in the dark or when you set up at the beginning of a game and take ages and annoy everyone. But if you do want to go out on patrol and you might be out for a couple of hours, you might be wanting to set up a bit of a harbour area while you're out on patrol, it might be worth taking a basher with you. So let's just have a look at that. Okay, so rather than my 
massive hammock set up, which is for camp. I'm out on patrol, we just want a bit of shelter while we're having lunch, we're putting an OP in. I've got a basher, and mine's rigged up with jungle knots, which are a little bit different to the way Gadge has it with his bungees. So I'm just going to pop that up and then we'll talk about it. You see what we've got here is two strands of paracord that have been knotted about every six inches. Lark's headed through this loop. And all you have to do is put your basher up, put it around whatever you're putting it around, put a knot through, sometimes you put two through for security, and then two bits of cord clamp on that one, and you're done. Any excess you can just put around there. Uh, super quick. Now if you want all round observation, we'll go to a couple of extra trees. We're just going to watch that arc, so I'm going to peg it out behind. So as you can see, it's low, you can even have it lower if you need to. Put it in an OP, you don't actually want to be seen. But you know, I've got enough space underneath. Do a bit of admin, cook my lunch. Have a bit of a rest if there's sentries out. It's always nice to have a bit of overhead protection when you're making camp. And if the weather is not very good, you've got protection from that as well. The difference between my big camp setup and what I would take out on a short patrol with me. Tom? <laughs> 